What's up guys? Philip Collin, Pack Pythons here in the snake pit and today is going to suck. I do not want to make this video, but I have to. I have to be transparent, share my experience so that I can help you guys avoid making the same mistakes I'm making or I have made. Uh, I'm going to continue to do this until I stop making these videos. This is, this is my style. I'm not one to hide my, uh, my struggles. I think my collection may have a virus that is spreading throughout and I'm hoping I can catch it before it becomes a major problem. At this point, I believe there's three animals that are sick and there is one that just perished a few days ago that brought all of this to my attention. It kind of uh, has started this, uh, this new portion of the journey. <clears throat> Let's backtrack. Six, uh, no, eight, nine months ago, I had a male pop up uh, with respiratory infection. I, I know respiratory infections. I've, I've been messing with animals for uh, about a dozen, about 12 years, something like that. And it's pretty obvious when an animal's sick. You can look at an animal from just about any angle and tell that it's got a respiratory infection or something going on where it's struggling to breathe or the mouth is, seems to be irritated. So he popped up, looked sick. It was like a Saturday morning or Friday evening. So I had to wait two, three days to get him seen. Brought him in as soon as I could on Monday. And he had, you know, respiratory infection for sure. They gave me a treatment of, or a, a kit of antibiotic needles. They gave him one injection at the vet office and then they sent me home with the rest of them. And before I could ever give him his first injection, which would have been right at about a week from when I saw he was ill, uh, I went that day to go give him his shot and found him dead in the cage. He had died between that morning and that afternoon. And I don't know if y'all have ever experienced respiratory infection in a ball python, but they don't die in a week. So when I told the vet that he was already dead, they were like, Oh wow, that's bizarre that he died that quick. Uh, but there's nothing else you can do. He had passed away, so we moved along. <clears throat> I inspected every animal in my collection at the time. Everything looked perfectly healthy, no other issues. So we just carried on as usual. Kept a close eye on everything. A few months later, a female popped up with a respiratory infection. And again, it was pretty advanced. Uh, had sprung up seemingly overnight. Uh, I again, I've mentioned this before. I check all my animals every morning and every afternoon, and they, uh, for something like that to spring up that quickly is bizarre. Brought them back to the same vet. If you're anywhere near Savannah. Avian and Exotics in Pooler, Georgia is a fantastic facility. Great veterinarians. They know their stuff. They only mess with the exotics. They don't do any cats or dogs. I feel like their pricing is reasonable and fair and their service is definitely great. So highly recommend them. Brought Penny into the vet and they did a full check because at that point they're like okay last time snake died quick something's going on let's really sort this out and try to find out what's going on so they did a flush some kind of thing where they put fluid in her and then take it back out and then they inspect it under a scope to see for like i don't know bacteria and parasites or whatever and it was totally clean they found nothing so then they did another test where they send, take a swab, send it off. And that's another test for some normal 
typical cause of respiratory infection. I don't know exactly what it was. If I can find the paperwork that says what it was, I'm gonna put it right here. And if there's nothing right here, this is blank, then that means I couldn't figure it out. So, sorry, I wish I had more information, but. Uh, they sent it off, took a few weeks for that to come back. In the meantime, they gave me a different type of antibiotic to try to treat her with. They gave her one injection at the office, sent me home with a kit. Every three days I had to give her a shot. I gave her five or six shots before we got the results back from the test. Those results came back negative again. So still no clue what was going on. We, uh, at that point, the vet asked how the treatment was going, if she was improving. At that point, she hadn't improved, she hadn't gotten worse. So no change in conditions. She was completely isolated for that whole two, three week period. And at that point they said, well, uh, stop doing the antibiotics because they should have helped by now. And if they're not gonna help, then don't keep treating her. Don't overload her, her immune system for no good reason with uh, antibiotics, antibiotics that she doesn't need. Uh, so at that point, if it was anything else, there, there's no treatment for whatever it could be, potentially. Uh, I was suggested to keep her in quarantine, maintain high temperatures, continue to feed her as normal, and that hopefully her body could overcome it on her own. That's basically the only treatment if it is something that's potentially, let's say, viral. At that point, that's what we were thinking. Uh, there are tests that you can get to test for specific viruses. Uh, at the time, I, I feel like she recommended a web, she recommended the website and I went to the website and couldn't sort out how to buy it or which one I needed or whatever. And probably was busy at the time. I don't remember exactly what, but it was basically just, you know, pay to find out which virus she had, but it wouldn't help because she couldn't be treated anyways. And again, she was the only one that seemed to be ill. So I just was hopeful that she would overcome it. And after about a month of being in quarantine, after we stopped the injections, the respiratory infection did clear. She was back to normal, back to a uh, nice clean mouth, totally seem seeming totally healthy. And we left her in quarantine for, I think, two more months. She was in quarantine for three or four months total. It was a long period of time where she was completely by herself. And I'm not saying quarantine as in my quarantine rack. She was in my room in an enclosure fully by herself uh, to avoid any kind of cross-contamination or whatever. Well, after an additional month, after she appeared healthy, waited another month, she still appeared healthy. She got brought back into general population and that's where she's at now and then we thought again we were we were past it so fast forward another three or four months and a few days ago one of my adult male breeders passed away and that was mojo my mojave leopard male Initially, I never saw any respiratory infection signs from him, none at all. And he had stopped eating for because we were breeding him, which is normal. And he hadn't stopped breeding for or eating for that long to the point that he was malnourished or anything like that. Uh, so it just seemed kind of random. I assumed my first assumptions were that it had could have had something to do with my heat setup that we just transitioned from where we were predominantly on uh, ambient temperature. And the reason I suspected that is because there was, uh, there was a little bit of temperature fluctuation that I didn't have control of. This AC unit is really good does maintain very well, but the problem is, is that it can only be on heat or cold. So on a cooler day, the AC doesn't help keep it warm. 
So if I'm not in here every single day, checking the temperature for the day and adjusting the settings even throughout the day, then it could get too cold and the AC might still be running or it could get too hot and the heater's still running or whatever. So it wasn't, it's not a perfect system. It, I maintained it as best I could, but I'm going 14, 16 hours a day. I can't sit here and babysit the, that all day long, which is why as quickly as I could, I got on this, I got to repairing the back heat and all that stuff. Um, so thinking that it was the heat, maybe the temperature fluctuations caused him to get sick and that caused him to pass away. I wasn't exactly sure. He never really showed any obvious signs of being ill. And then I noticed today that I have two, maybe three adult females that look like they have respiratory infection again. One of them is Penny, again, is showing signs of having respiratory infection. Not good. So now I've got one animal, so one animal died eight months ago. Another animal died two days ago. One was sick six months ago and is now sick again. It's a mess. And then at least one or two more that look like they're ill. Now, uh, if this is nidovirus, there's a test for it. I ordered the test kit today. It is on its way. I'm going to test, uh, I'm gonna look through my whole collection. Anything that looks ill, uh, I'm gonna set up a quarantine for, and I'm gonna find whichever one looks the most ill Probably Penny because I know she had it or she whatever's going on she had at some point So there's a chance that she still had it seems like she would still have it and if that's the case then I want to test her and see if it is nidovirus If it is There is basically nothing I can do to treat them I'm gonna have to quarantine anything that I find that's ill and until further notice, I am stuck and forced to assume that any one of my animals could be asymptomatic and carrying the virus, which sucks. So, uh, all these animals that I just bought to keep some and resell some, uh, I'm stuck with. Uh, I fortunately can afford to feed them. It's not, a, it's not a big hit to me. Uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, it's unfortunate and it's, it's inconvenient and it sucks. But other than that, I'll be all right. Uh, where do we go from here? Quarantine, whatever we can. We treat, uh, well, we can't treat, but we test and hopefully sort out exactly what's going on. Even if it is nidovirus, I'd rather know than not know. Continue to lose animals. And we go into lockdown mode until further notice. And we hold on to everything and wait and see which animals make it. Hopefully they all do. And if any perish, then it's just the natural course of things, unfortunately. So, huh. if you ever want to breed or, you know, you get some opportunity, let's say you get an opportunity to buy a, a lot of animals all at once and you expect to be able to Oh, I'll just have them for a few weeks and then I can sell them and then I won't have to worry about feeding them, etc. Uh, or I'm going to produce a bunch of animals and it's not a big deal. I don't have to feed them all that long, just a few weeks and then I can sell them and then I won't have to worry about feeding them anymore. Any animals you bring into your collection, you better be prepared and stable enough to feed them all indefinitely because 
stuff like this happens. And your choices in this situation are to either ignore it and continue to sell and hope that nobody figures out that you're the one selling sick animals and that you're the one that infected their collection or colony. Or you suck it up and hold on to everything until you're sure that your, your animals are healthy. So this is gonna be a long road. This is gonna be a, a couple months, uh, a few months of, of isolation and our quarantine, whatever you wanna call it, and constantly checking other animals and sorting out what's ill and what isn't. Ugh, big mess. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave it off there. I've kind of been scatterbrained. I hope I pieced together a whole coherent thought there. I hope it's helpful to somebody. Uh, if you're going through something similar and you're looking for support and future advice, again, I'm not a scientist. I don't remember all the exact terminology. I'm no professional, but I've been around a little bit and I've figured some of this out and I'm slowly making more mistakes that you can learn from. And if you are if you like to learn from other people's mistakes, then I'm gonna put a little thing right here where you can subscribe to my channel and follow along as we uh, take this journey. And then if you'd like to see some of my less uh, bummy and, and dreary videos, I'm gonna put a button right here of a video I think you'd enjoy. So take a look. <sighs> you guys take it easy. If it ain't easy, don't take it. Peace.